What's going on, FA Nation? John Pemba here with James Grande. Welcome to the Quick Pitch MLB DFS podcast and live stream recording here for Tuesday's 11 game main slate. Uh, James, yesterday we had another big slate of baseball. We kind of talked about how, eh, you know, we didn't really love the pitching. We did find some gems there. Rasmussen came through big time for us, 30 fantasy points. Hunter Brown, unfortunately, labored through uh, his yep. matchup against Detroit, but he was chalk. I mean, if you really played him, he didn't kill you uh, as much as if you played maybe a Zach Plesak, who gave you a negative 12 fantasy points. Uh, we talked about some high-scoring games. You mentioned the Red Sox uh, right up there with the highest implied team run total. We talked about the Dodgers uh, having one of the higher team implied run totals. Both of those offenses uh, and the chalkier players there came through. So uh, all in all, not a terrible day for the podcast lineup that we built. Uh, and now we turn the page here to Tuesday, 11 games, much better top end pitching, which I think is where you're going to see a lot of roster ships spent today because uh, you know what? This is a spot where some teams have made it through their rotation. Some teams are still working down the back end of their rotation here. Um, we have 11 games. Howard Bender is on your playbook today. So uh, Roto Buzz guys should certainly have that out sometime in the afternoon. But uh, we're giving you our first look impressions here, James. Uh, what are we focusing in on when it comes to Vegas? Any concerning weather reports for today at all? Um, so, yeah, I mean, some teams working through the rotations. Some teams already through it, which is good. It just depends on how the schedule um pans out in terms of weather it doesn't look like there's anything all that concerning um there is rain forecasted we are recording pretty early in the morning so things could obviously change uh you know we know how meteorology is (laughs) is on a day-to-day basis you know um it was supposed to rain all weekend here in south carolina and then it didn't rain at all so like you know um sometimes we're their guess is as good as ours but uh from reports, it looks like some rain in Toronto, Kansas City that could cause a delay, but also there's 25 mile an hour winds blowing out there, uh, which means Toronto and Kansas City bats already. Without looking at the weather, I thought that was going to be a, a spot that we look towards for offense. Um, and 25 mile an hour winds is only going to help that. So yeah. that looks like the only spot uh, in terms of weather. Some Vegas totals. Let's see who the biggest favorites on the board. Uh, Frambar Valdez minus 290, Julio Urias minus 275, um, Shane Bieber minus 200. Those are the only three games uh, on the main slate that are 200 plus favorites. Josh Fleming 180. That's ballooned pretty from opening at 157. Yeah, Fleming um, just kind of given the price point. I feel like gonna be pretty popular today. Yeah, um, I could definitely see that. So we have well, Luis Castillo minus 175 um, as well. So we have some uh, decent spots on the money line. Let's see some totals here. Um, yeah, I mean, here's exactly par for the course, right? We just mentioned uh, wind in Toronto, KC, John. So the line, and we said it yesterday, lines do not open early in this year at like nine. Not usually. Nine and a no. half. This line opened at nine and a half across the industry. Points bet, DraftKings, BetMGM, Caesars, Fandle, up to ten already. Yeah. Um, I wonder they, if we'll, I you know. I wonder if the rule changes will see higher lines this year. I think so, especially I, I, as they realize so. like how many guys are stealing bags and like offense kind of increases a little bit here. Uh, offense is on watch. fire. Something certainly to watch. Yeah. Offense is on fire to start this year. Yep. Um. So nine and a half there, another nine run total in Boston and Pittsburgh. Um, Ronzi Contreras versus Nick Pavetta. We have nine in Tampa Bay, Washington. Uh, Washington throwing out Chad Cool uh, in that game. Nine and a half in Atlanta and St. Louis. Nine in other places, but where I'm looking, nine and a half. Um, so we have a lot of juicy spots to attack. Uh, money, or in terms of uh implied runs john if you had to guess it's been the uh part you know it's been the uh i would say the most present part of this podcast so far what do you think leads on uh implied runs today with the red sox no i'm blue jays actually oh okay okay um blue jays number one red sox number two right because you said part of this podcast the last couple days has always been the red sox as part it has it has been and you know what they were pretty popular yesterday and if you played them in the first you were very 
probably thinking like I might win a tournament tonight, <laughs> uh, after one inning of baseball last night. Um, but yeah, uh, Blue Jays, Red Sox, Cardinals, Rays, Yankees are your top five uh, implied totals. For nice. All right, let's get into it here. We'll go to the pitching side of things. Uh, again, studs at the top is going to be the name of the slate, in my opinion here. Max Scherzer, Shane Bieber, Julio Urias, Framber Valdez, Louis Castillo, uh, your top five starting pitchers here. Uh, in terms of matchups, uh, obviously we know uh, that you know, attacking Oakland has generally been the way to go, unless your name's Zach Plesak. Um, you know, attacking Detroit uh, has been a positive way to go uh, so far this season. Uh, you know, are those kind of the two guys, Bieber and Valdez, that you're keying in on here? Or do you like spending all the way up for Scherzer or, or maybe Urias or Castillo and their matchups against Colorado and the Angels? Um, so I'm okay getting to Scherzer here. Um, 10-8 against Milwaukee. I think it's a – I think you can use Max in really any setting uh, – in any format you'd like. Um, love to see 91 pitches. I mean, that's yeah. probably the most pitches we've seen out of anybody in their opening. But that, like, does that surprise anybody seeing Max Scherzer, you no, know, he's fresh a, he's out of the gate? Bulldog. He goes out yeah. there and he, like, refuses to come off the mound. He was probably pissed yeah. he had to leave after 91. So He was definitely pissed. Pro- probably is underselling it. Sure. It's definitely was pissed. Um, so I think you could definitely get to Scherzer. Um, perfectly fine getting to Bieber. Um, Urias, you know, we know the Rockies can hit lefties, but like they're on the road here. Have to love the ballpark. Um, Urias shit. has the best, uh, win odds on drafting sportsbook in terms of pitchers to actually get the win. Uh, he is minus 110 today. The, uh, Shane Bieber's minus 105, Framber plus 105, and Scherzer's coming in at plus 115. So, in terms of if you were to bet on a pitcher to get a win today, uh, it is Urias and Bieber as the top two best favorites in Vegas right now. You know, it's it's funny because I would say, like, Herman Marquez on the road, we know is a different animal than Herman Marquez at home. I, I know that's just like res- paying respects to the Dodgers and, like, what they are and, like, how much of a World Series threat they are year in, year out. But, you know, um, I guess because... Bieber on the road, Scherzer on the road, you you give the nod to your ice. But that's interesting. Um, I'm okay getting to, like, really anybody up at this top tier with the exception – over 9K, of course, with the exception of Herman Marquez. I know I just mentioned how good he is on the road, but, like, just attacking the Dodgers this year is going to be a nightmare, especially yeah. last night. We talked about it before the pod. Like, yes, Freeman got his and Will, Will Smith got his. The bottom of the lineup destroyed – Rockies pitching last night. Yep. So if the bottom of the lineup, if the Jason Haywards and the Chris Taylors and the James Outmans are doing that, wait until what happens when the whole lineup's clicking. Like, so I, I'd be okay getting to anybody. Brambar, eighty-five pitches, game one. You know he's going to probably push for a hundred in this spot. Um, I, I don't think there's a wrong answer here. Uh, just for our, our friends that do play over on Fanduel, the top pitching guys over there are generally similarly priced as they are over on DraftKings as well. So no real difference. Uh, Framber is actually the cheapest of that top group there. That's uh, interesting. Over, over on uh, on Fanduel, so uh, but still uh, pretty pretty similar pricing, uh, which is rare because on Fanduel you get the more money. Obviously, you only need one pitcher over there, but uh, sometimes you see pricing ballooned over on Fanduel. Um, you know, not, not nearly as much of a difference today, uh, when it comes to those top price guys, Framber, Framber quality start machine too. Like we saw, they like pulled the him early. I'm hopeful they won't pull him early and start two. They pulled him after five shutout in that first outing against Oakland, which is kind of frustrating. There, I, I think it was the laboredness of it. Cause 85 pitches in five innings is not what you want to see, right. but like we know, I mean, he's constantly over a hundred pitches in his starts. Yep. So my expectation is well. That's why I was annoyed by it. <laughs> right, I, right. I, I, I know. had I had bet Framber to get a win in that game, uh, and they pulled him after five and a tie against the White Sox. I think it was so. Uh, well, either way, like he's going to log a quality start here. Like six innings, three or less earned runs is like almost a guarantee. It was actually a guarantee last year. Like I don't yeah. want to say almost a guarantee. It was a guarantee. Did he, did he lead the league in quality starts last year? 
Yeah, he. I think it was a record. He broke the record for most consecutive quality starts. Yeah. I think he had like 25, 26 in a row. So. Yeah, he was gross. Uh, yeah, and you get those. You get those points over on a Fanduel for sure. Fanduel. Yeah. Uh, Mid tier guys here again. I don't know if there's one play that sticks out to you more than the other. <laughs> I. I don't. I mean, I don't know. Baltimore bats have looked pretty good. Yeah. I don't, know if I, I don't want to pay eighty nine hundred for Andrew Heaney. <laughs> Um, can't trust Boston pitching at all. Mats gets Atlanta here. Maybe Jose Suarez against Seattle, but like the Angels have a tough matchup. I, is there, is there a favorable pitcher spot for you here? I, I don't, I don't really care for much. No. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Um, uh, like I, I don't hate Heaney's strikeout upside, um, uh, because we know like he's one of those guys that misses bats, but doesn't miss bats. Like, he gives up a lot of home runs, but strikes out a lot of people at the same time. Like right. he, Baltimore, you know, a very, again, small sample, but this year, 25% K rate is pretty high. Um, so, you know, you could take advantage of that. I mean, Pittsburgh has a 27% K rate. Do I want to trust anyone on Boston staff right now, John? I don't. I it's been bad. P- Pavetta, um, if anything, has been like the more consistent pitcher in the Red Sox staff for like a couple years now. But like, like they're okay. They haven't. I think they haven't been very. They're good. okay. Like both those guys are are fine. Um, I mean, Demir Herman was god awful in spring training. I know Nestor was really good yesterday against Philly, um, but like. I Nestor is really good and Domingo Herman is not. I don't right. I like maybe darts on Heaney, maybe darts on Pavetta, but it's not even like they're cheap. Like on Fandle, they're more reasonable, but yeah. like DraftKings I, like I'd rather just take shots on I think some guys that are like sub seven K. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh I that and which brings us to you mentioned the Rays being big favorites over Washington. Uh, Josh Fleming was, you know, used more of a as a starter la- or as a uh, an opener last season. Um, they're going to use him as a traditional starter t- this year. Because they were like on the fence about it. They were right. like, we're gonna, they were gonna like use him as a long reliever, and then they were like, yeah, we'll just use you as a starter. Instead. He wasn't g- good last season, but, but like neither is Washington. So. No, they're off. Um, and we've seen Rasmussen and um, who's the Tampa opening day starter there? Uh, or not opening day. The... McClanahan? No, no, no. Who's the, who pitched uh, two days ago? Oh, before? Jeffrey Jeffrey Springs. Springs. We've seen awesome. Sp- yeah, Springs was great. Rasmussen was great. Dude, they're going to be so good. If these uh, – Eflin, like their staff is so good. If they again. can get offense is the, is going to be the yep. big question again. Like can can Wander Franco turn into that guy they need him to be? That's what they're banking on, right? Yeah. It's like they they extend to Rose Arena and they get Wander and it's like, "Okay, this is what we're going to be. You're our, our savior because our yep. pitching is going to be awesome." Right. Which is, you know, the the blue, blueprint of the of the blue of the uh the table race here. So Do we have ownership, John? No, nah, I'm looking. I don't see it out yet. Um, um, I can look. I'll look. Uh, I'll look other places to see if we can. If anyone has ownership out yeah. early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, where, where I looked yesterday when we recorded. Uh, we obviously we recorded a little bit later in the day yesterday than we did than we are right now. Um, so it was out. It's not out as of yet. Because uh, I'd be curious to see exactly where Fleming ownership is for this slate. Because I mean, again, like where else do you find yourself? like interested in going here it just there's not i mean it is fleming for sure that was like what i was that was where i was leading to he's definitely interesting um i mean so i don't think i remember i mentioned kikuchi being but like it's also the the royals offenses looked really good yeah bobby witt going into yesterday was 0 for 10 to start the year and then he woke up so like (laughs) melinda's homered yesterday um they, they're scary, kind of. They're like, that offense could be pretty good. Kikuchi is a minus 175 favorite. Yeah. So we know that he could be torched. Like, I think there's, you can sack against Kikuchi. You could also make a case for him. Um, Casey has a 20, or Casey's seventh in terms of strikeouts, 25.5%. So. 
Do we know for sure who's pitching for Baltimore today? Um, I can look. Does the DraftKings slate not have DraftKings shows Taylor Wells, but it says he's he's pitched on he pitched Monday. Let's just look. Let's see what they have. FanDuel doesn't list a pitcher for Baltimore. I'm looking at uh, MLB.com to be determined, according to MLB.com. I mean, I'm not, I'm not uh, saying I want to go at Texas by any means. I was just curious who exactly they're throwing out there. Yeah, they me. have not. They ha- Oh, you know why? Last night, right, Bradish left with an injury, and right. Tyler Wells threw five innings. Right, right, right. So that's so, what happened there. So they are, yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing official, but um, obviously they're going to have to figure something out. I wonder, based on the schedule... If they can, so their opening day was like everyone's. Right. Let's see, uh, one, two, three, four. So yeah, they're gonna need maybe a, maybe a bullpen game. They're gonna need a bullpen game. I think. Ah, today's the fifth day. Have they had a day off yet? Probably right. When was uh, opening day? The thirtieth, right? One, yep. two, Thursday. Three, four, five. They could just go to who is their opening day starter? I don't even remember. Whoever their opening day they starter. Faced the Red, they faced the Red Sox. I don't remember who it was. Whoever their opening day starter was, um, was it Kyle Gibson? Was their opening yes, day starter? Yeah, Kyle Gibson was their opening day starter. Yeah. So I think they could go back to. If Kyle it was Gibson. Kyle Gibson, would you pitch? Let's see. There's a uh, let's see. What does DraftKings have Gibson priced at here? Sixty-seven hundred dollars is Kyle Gibson if he was to be activated today. Revenge narrative. Yeah. The old revenge He's at narrative. least a major league pitcher. Yeah, I mean it's fine. Um, I, it's it's okay. Texas Texas offense has a some solid dump, but do you think you go, would you go Suarez good. here then as value? Like, um, or does you just worried about the matchup against Seattle plus Castillo on the mound? It's probably Fleming for me. Okay. And that's just a, such, such a gross floor. It is a gross floor. Um, JP Sears was okay. He just doesn't have like a lot of strikeout upside, like 50 strikeouts in 70 innings last year. Yeah. Um, Manning gets Houston. He's like, was a former, like, Pretty solid prospect, and he was good last year. Um, but it's like contending with Houston, right? And he was terrible in spring. I would probably take shots on like maybe Ronzi Contreras because we know he has a ceiling. He just needs to throw strikes. I, I think what we've of- determined after talking about pitching for the first twenty minutes here is that uh, we won't. We're we might be double spending up. We might be like playing Framber and in, in, in Bieber or something like that today. Yeah, I mean, if we're not using, right? Because I mean, it's it's. I would probably lean Pavetta of the mid tier. Um, but it does, that doesn't even make you feel good. Doesn't make you feel good. Doesn't make Pittsburgh. Me feel good. All right, let's let's move on because we'll 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 just labor over this ugly, gross bottom pitching group for forever. Yeah. Um, catcher, obviously, that sort of setting of breaking down the starting pitching gives us a new perspective on how he approached the positions potentially here. So, like, likely takes us out of Rutschman, Smith, and, and that whole grouping, um, unless we find other value across the board. Um, we'll be looking a lot more into the mid-tier range. We do have, like, Sean Murphy uh, against a lefty and Steven Matz at $3,600. If he starts. Well, I They was... started Darno four out of four games. They started Murphy two out of four. Sure. I feel like the lefty matchup for Murphy is the way they want they'll utilize him. Yeah, but they're they were like, I mean, he just matches not, lefties like that's that wasn't match. the industry that wasn't the industry feeling on Sean Murphy coming into the. Well, year I was very surprised. Listen, when they got rid of uh, you know William, right? The other, yep. the, Darno's been great. I didn't I didn't mm-hmm. find why they needed to bring in like another legitimate catcher, and then they like DH one of them sometimes. So like. Um, I don't know. It just feels like a spot they would use Murphy, but sure. To that point, um, Zunino is a pure lefty masher. 
Yep. The only reason that guy's still in the league is because he hits left-handed is for power. So he's got yep. J.P. Sears here yep. um, at thirty-eight hundred dollars. Um, you know, more guys in the in the mid-tier. Uh, you know, Alejandro Kirk, if he's in the lineup, thirty-four hundred dollars. He gets Bubik. It's a great price, for right? Him. Great price for him. Kybert gets Fleming thirty four hundred. If we're not sold on Fleming, like good mid tier price for Kybert at thirty four hundred dollars here. So I think there's some good value here at the catcher position. Uh, what did Murphy do last night? He's a guy that generally hits lefty as well. There's a lefty on the mound. Did he? Uh, he cracked that lineup for them yesterday. Who? Sean Ta- Murphy. Ton Murphy. Tom Murphy, Seattle. Oh, dude, I'm like, who are you? What, Mur- where, didn't we just talk about? No, um, Tom Murphy. He's a, he's a career uh, lefty guy. Tom Murphy, Tom Murphy, yes. Um, Did he crack the lineup? He did, and he went 0 for 4. Okay, well, he's got a lefty he's, today. He's 0 for 6 to start the year. I'm like, yo, we just spent all this time talking about Sean Murphy. Now you're asking me about him again? Um, <coughs> That was my apologies. No, uh, no over, I mean, yeah, I mean, if he's in the lineup, I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah. Um, I can't get past the Kirk price, thirty four. Yeah, that's great. I agree. I with also you. like Danny Danny Jansen as well in the same matchup. Kinda had a breakout last year. Like I know he yep. was hurt, but fifteen home runs in seventy four games. Yep. Uh would you good. play would you play Trevino against Strom if he's in a lineup? Yes. And I would also play Higashioka, who has been largely getting starts against lefties. Okay. Uh he got a, he had a home run the other day against a lefty. Uh I could see the Yankees being pretty popular today uh with a lefty on the mound. i wonder how, how long strom pitches because he's not hasn't you know, last year he wasn't a starter he was a reliever so uh, um do they rob thompson will start the fifth game um while R- ranger suarez he expects strom to go 65 to 70 pitches okay so a couple innings at least four or five pitch four or five innings there maybe oh he'll get so probably two times around the Yankees lineup. Yep. Um, if if he pitches well enough to be in that long. Right. Uh, so I think that's where I would probably land on catcher here. Um, you know, uh, Contreras for St. Louis gets a lefty here in Dodd. Um, he's at forty four hundred dollars, but again, I feel like we're going to be spending down at the catcher spot today. Yeah. Um, Yankees guys, Blue Jays guys. Whoever starts between them, yep. I kind of like. I, I mean, Kirk 34 is probably my favorite. I agree. All right, first base position. Again, the uh, guys at the top may be difficult to get to. You can probably – we're going to be able to spend up for at least one bat. But, uh, you know, looking at all these matchups, a lot of lefties on the mound today. Uh, a lot of guys that hit lefties like Crone, Vladdy, Goldschmidt. Um, you know, France hit lefties pretty well last year. Uh, where where are you uh, kind of focusing in on here on the top guys? Um, top of first base. Everyone has, I mean Goldschmidt against Dustin Dodd or Dylan Dodd rather, yeah. um, is interesting. Um, Dylan Dodd had a really good spring, but you know at we saw him at a plus ball for most of last year he made one triple a start uh he's only been in the minor leagues for two years i'm okay getting to goldschmidt we know how much of a lefty masher he's been he probably would be my top uh my top guy and then alonzo against wade miley the only thing with wade miley is he doesn't allow a lot of hard contact right and then vladdy obviously so it would be Goldschmidt, Vladdy, and Alonzo for me um, above 5K. And I don't hate Ty France, as you mentioned, but I I probably prefer I prefer Goldie, Vladdy, and Pete. Sure. Uh, mid-tier range, Jose Abreu against Matt Manning at $4,400. Good mid-tier price there. Nate Lowe uh, at $4,100 probably fits some, some decent builds depending on who actually is on the mound for Baltimore here today in that mid-tier. If you wanted to stack Boston, uh, Justin Turner is there. Um, as well, uh, though I kind of like the guys that generally hit around Turner, Duvall, um, you know, Yoshida and, and uh, Endeavors there are probably a little bit better uh, options for you. But other than that, like, there isn't any really, like, strong 4K candidates here. Yeah, I mean, I think we just probably, like, Mount, you could also just stack Mountcastle with Orioles. <clears throat> sure. Um, 
I largely agree. Like, I would play Pasquatino in the lefty-lefty split, even though righties are, like, just so much better, see the ball so much better than uh, lefties against Kikuchi. But, um, yeah, I, I would just dip down below 4K for sure. Uh, not that we'll play it tonight, but you did mention Josh Naylor at first base last night. He does a value play. He homered. Uh, Casas homered again. Casas or homered for the first time this year. Back to back days with a hit. Uh, he's still twenty five hundred bucks. I think he's the clear spend down here. Middle of the Red Sox lineup. They're scoring a bunch of runs. He's supposed to be a really great prospect for them with some power. So uh, may, maybe the the one for one pinch hit the other day and then the home run yesterday starting to to readjust here to some major league pitching. Yeah, we need the home run, right? Like that's what he's gonna. That's what we're playing him for. Yeah. We're not. He's not gonna go three for four often, but if we get the one for four and the one is a third on home run, we're perfectly yeah, he fine. He had a with really that. good walk rate last year. He has like ridiculous plate discipline, uh, you know, so that he could maybe get a walk or two in there as well. But at least that's what we put we had on display last year. Uh, we'll see if he that kind of carries over to this year. Hopefully, he's not. Pressing too much, but yeah, uh, that's kind of where I'm at with the value tier. I don't hate Derek Hall. I don't hate Derek Hall. Um, okay. 2,600 against Domingo Herman. Domingo Herman is not very good. Derek Hall should be hitting in a in a favorable spot. Yeah, he, had, he had four, projected hit fourth probably in the sign up today. So. I mean, it's Turner. Alec Bohm is crushing baseball. Schwarber has been awful, but we know what Schwarber's upside can be. Like, they still, without Bryce Harper have a, and Hoskins, have a really good lineup. Um, you know, I, I think Derek Hall 2,600 could be a, a very good play, especially in a, in a Philly stack, which, you know, Philly not really projected for much, many runs, 3.9. It's like on the lower end of the slate. Um, so, so the, uh, you know. the, the Cardinals recalled Juan Yepes yesterday. Um, yeah, I saw with, that. So he's 2,700 bucks. If he cracks in the lineup, he's first base outfield eligibility. Um, righty lefty matchup that was where they used him last year was against lefty so uh, potentially seeing Yepes make his uh, season debut here for them yeah and if he does uh, I would have interest for sure okay um second base position here uh oh god Mookie Betts is second base eligibility we're back to that we haven't we do have it back we are we are <laughs> Hey, all right, Mookie, Mookie at second. Uh, well, uh, whatever. Uh, Gliber at forty nine. He's been really good to start the year. Yeah, he's been awesome. He's really good. Yes, right? um, DraftKings very quick to be moving price tags on these guys uh, early on in the year. Good, good to them for at least paying attention, I guess. Right. Um, you know, they gave up on the NBA three months ago when it came to moving prices. But uh, <laughs> Gliber at forty nine, Simeon's at forty nine. Here, Albie's against a lefty uh, at forty eight hundred dollars. Kind of your top three there. Yeah, I mean, Glaber's going to be probably be popular. Um, yeah, you think Yankees going to be popular today, huh? I mean, it, it's a good spot against a. My my one thing about the Yankees is that they're all you know they're expensive, right? So it's like. Yeah, no, I I don't disagree. Um, I guess that could be the one thing limiting them um, from being popular. We're going to get to probably some cheap guys yeah. that we can play. We'll, we'll be still thirty one hundred, so. Um, Labor Torres, 4,900, pretty expensive, but he has three stolen bases and two home runs to start the year. Yep. So, um, like it is just worth, you know, I mean, if he gets a base, he's going, if he hits a home run, you know, yep. So 100%. Um, all right. If we're going down into the mid tier range here, uh, who are some of the guys that you're kind of keying in on? Uh, Donovan's been hot, but he's a lefty versus lefty, so I don't know if we're going to go necessarily in that direction. LeMayu is at 39. LeMayu was a first base to get eligible player yesterday. Now he's second and third. Uh, so they're moving some of these eligibilities around here today. Um, let's see. Brandon Lau with 3,400. That feels too cheap for him. I know he's struggled, but. Yeah, he's leading off, too, which is. Well, he let off yesterday, which is nice. Um,. I like the thought against Chad Cool of a, a Brandon Lau, Wander Franco, Randy Rosarena stack, and and the goat Luke Rayleigh who homered twice. This <laughs> yeah, night, really. two thousand so. dollar Luke Rayleigh last night, eleven percent rostered in my contest. I was like, good, good, good on you guys for uh... another value. By the way, twenty three hundred if we wanted to go back there, but um, first outfield eligible. So yeah, I, I like Brandon Lau. Um, Is he a, outfield eligible? Is that what you said? Yeah. 
Yeah, Luke Rayleigh's first and outfield. First and outfield, yeah. Uh, just uh, to, to know, Chad Cool doesn't really discriminate last year, uh, lefties and righties. Uh, 508 slugging, 493 slugging. So uh, righties did hit 306, a little bit better than him, 264 for lefties, but uh, everything else is pretty much the same. So uh, he is bad equally to both sides of the plate. Bad equally to both sides of the plate. That is correct. We do have to factor in that he um, did pitch in Colorado last year. True. So that is like I know I'm not I'm not saying he's like a great pitcher, but the that numbers are definitely a, a, a little Pittsburgh, inflated. Pittsburgh, he had a 4.82 ERA. So that, yeah, you know I, I think he's not. He is less than average, but it is worth mentioning. Lefties that. in 2021 when he was at Pittsburgh, 857 OPS. Okay, well, yeah, there you go. Okay, so. Um, so potentially, uh, so some Brandon Lau, I think, could be, I think Tampa Bay is going to be pretty popular today. Uh, again, yeah, because they're, because they're cheap, right? Because they're cheap, yeah. yeah. Um, Bryson Stott, 2,900. I know he's, like, been hitting near the bottom of the lineup. Yeah. But uh, he's a, he has some pop. He has some speed, too. 10 home runs, 12 stolen bases last year. So, you know, just with the 12 stolen bases, we assume that that number balloons with how stolen bases are up. So maybe closer to 20 this year. So I wouldn't hate. I like Philly today because uh, I don't think Domingo Herman's very good. So, Yeah, I'm with you there. Uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Um, any other value guys that you're taking a peek at at, at second base? Um, I mean, Stott 29. Yeah, you know, you mentioned Stott. I just wasn't sure if there's anybody else. Jihuan Bay, if he's in the lineup for Pittsburgh, he was off to a good start. Does, does our guy Santiago Espinal crack a lineup today? Maybe, maybe. 2100 maybe. versus a lefty, you know? Yeah, it's crazy. And it's, a, I mean, this, the Blue Jays are... He started off so good for us last year, and then he just tailed off. <laughs> the, the Blue Jays are going to be so popular here. Yeah. Um, Witt, Merrifield, like has been decent to start the year. We haven't even gotten to see him really run yet either. Against lefties last year, Espinal, 301, 830. So, he, a... I don't think, he's played one game. Yeah, just one game, 0 for 4, yeah. So, Espinal or Whit Merrifield, whoever is in the starting line. Yep, that works. All right, third base, uh, top guys, we know him. Ramirez, Devers, Riley versus lefty. Bregman, who actually hit, was he hit righties better last year, right, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He did have, he was a reverse split. Uh, Arenado gets the lefty here. Suarez gets Suarez, lefty, lefty. Gunnar Henderson homered for the first time yesterday for the year. Um, a lot of top end guys here. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to ignore Ramirez and Devers if you can get there. It's hard yeah, to you ignore lo- You loved lefty. Devers yesterday. That was like your one guy, and, and he just planted one of the seats first inning, so. Um,. Yeah, he made an error in the first that caused like four runs yes. to score, and then and then hit a home run to make up for it. Uh, Ramirez had a huge game. Devers had a huge game. Riley homered. Like this is the problem with third base, right? You could play any of these guys. We know Arenado's success against lefties last year against a guy making his major league debut. So um, I have no issue getting to any of those guys. I would say ramirez is probably my favorite of the bunch um but 6100 is obviously a tough yeah. price tag to get to so like any of the other guys below um uh, work just Gunner. just for some perspective let's say we went with bieber and like uh castillo right that's 38 that's 3750 a player if we were to kind of go in that double spend direction just so we'll kind of get an idea of the players we're looking at for hitting wise um if we went mid-tier with like a pavetta and bieber it's thirty eight seventy five. So unless we go down all the way to Fleming, uh, which will give us forty two basically a player. It's uh, we're looking in the mid three Ks for a lot of these guys here. So yeah, I mean we'll we'll we have some value at other positions. We do too, like for sure. So we third base most likely unless we're like going down. Like I like again. I'm just gonna keep saying it. Phillies. Alec Bohm had like four hits last night. Mm-hmm. Thirty four hundred. He is destroying baseballs to start the year. Donaldson gets a lefty. He's that's the only side <laughs> yeah. he can hit, right? Um, Candelario against Fleming. If we're not a Fleming buyer, he homer. Yeah, he homered last night for the first time this year. So like, there's value. Their base just seems to be that one position that that's like our position that we spend up on, yeah. and like consistently, it just doesn't miss. It just hasn't missed. 
I agree. Spend up. I, yes, there's a lot of good talent there. Um, shortstop. We mentioned Volby's 3100. We'll kind of work our way up then, if that ends up being how we want to uh, how we want to approach it there. Um, top five guys: Turner, O'Neill, Cruz, Lindor. Anybody kind of popping off to you there? All three. Love Turner. Sure. That just hits O'Neill Cruz. Probably gonna hit a home run against Pavetta. <laughs> you watch and... it. What? Can you watch your mouth? <laughs> I mean, Boston scoring a lot of runs, but man, are they giving him up in bunches too? That's true. Um, Lindor has notoriously been good against lefties. That hasn't been the case, but obviously we're not playing Adamas. Nope. You know, obviously will be the most contrarian five K play probably of the slate if yeah. you want to play that. Wander's um, at forty nine. Yeah, and then uh, Wit. I think it's like Wit, Wander at forty, and Pachette. All three elite, elite plays. Sure. Um, I actually probably lean the other two over Wander. Okay. Because I love that game. I think that game is just. I mean, it's ten. Like, there's, it's a ten and a half run total places, right? Like, it's the Blue Jays have the highest implied run total of the day. That game is just. I'd be hard pressed not to have a lot of. Um, Mateo last night homered. Um, I, I mean, dude, is he not just going to be the best? He's just going to be the he best might fantasy be. asset of the year. Dude, he led the league in stolen bases last year. He leads the league in stolen bases right now. He did have 13 home runs last year. So, like, it's not as if he, he doesn't have a little bit. He just needs to make contact. He just needs to hit the ball. He doesn't have a little bit of hop in him. Um, again, yeah, against righties last year, he, he hit a whopping 228. Um, that's probably better than he hit lefties. Oh yeah, it was two two oh three versus lefties last year. Because so. I don't, I didn't even think he hit two twenty. Like that, that was better than. Um, but we're just plugging in Volpe here, right? Like that's just a no brainer. Probably, yeah. Probably. I mean, yeah. he wasn't great yesterday, but you know what? He's a rookie. He wasn't gonna homer, or he wasn't gonna steal a base every every, every, game. every day of his career. But he did have two walks, like. Unfortunately, he walked, and I think Jose Tre- uh, was it? yeah Trevino was on first. Like, what, he couldn't go anywhere. What are you yeah. gonna do? What are you gonna do about that? You yeah. know, so yeah. um, I, I think for as long as he is in that three K and under range, we're basically gonna be playing yep. twenty six hundred so. on Fanduel too. Like, just it's a plug and play. Yeah, I'll just plug him in now. All right, outfield then. Again, I, I don't want to waste a lot of time talking about these top guys, but just you know, rattle off a couple of guys you're you're in putting into your lineups today. Obviously, they're all playable, but like if you're building your stack today, you know who's the guy you're starting with. I mean, Aaron Judge, for sure. Sure. Um, I think if we are able to get to Yankees, he's obviously viable. Um, Stanton has been awesome. He hit one to the wall last night. Uh, to the deepest part of the park probably would have gone out if uh you know it didn't he didn't hit it there sure um would have been three straight i like schwarber in your stacks i like jordan in your stacks yoshida bumped up to 49 so they're wasting no time no time uh brian reynolds homer twice yesterday if you want <laughs> yeah. to attack pavetta like yeah. no problem going there um that's probably it moving our way down you know yeah. uh Tyler O'Neill gets a lefty. I think I think Cardinals could be a thing too. They have a pretty solid implied total. Sure. They all hit lefties. Can can keep playing Duval at forty two. Can keep playing Duval in like five eighty nine through <laughs> yeah. through his first five games. Um any Tommy Fam interest versus Miley? Sure. My only my only concern is when Miley just like doesn't give up hard contact. Sure. Um which is Obviously, you know, concerning because that's just like what he profiled. He was just, yeah. I know he's 36, but when you, when a guy profile like 28% hard hit rate last year, 52% ground ball rate, just like that's, that's like hard to want to stack. Like I'm okay with a one-off, sure. but is Tommy fam, is Tommy fam your one-off for, for a Met stack? Like, I feel like if you were playing a Met stack with a one-off, it's like, sure. I'm going to play Lindor or I'm going to play. Alonso, yeah i'm with you there uh i'm just kind of scrolling down to see if there's any like obvious value plays here um if mccormick does get back in the lineup for houston i know he didn't do anything last night but there is still in base potential with a righty on the mound so I, I don't mind that one um wayne thomas gets yet another lefty he probably leads off for washington again right like it's yep. a lefty at home yep yep he will um 
I mean, listen, if you're not playing Fleming, isn't the obvious to stack against him, right? Like, yep. It's, you, you either believe in him, so you're going to put him in your lineup, or you don't, you're <laughs> going to play against him. So, yep. It's kind of the way. I keep refreshing, by the way, to see if we'll get any roster ship here. I still don't see anything yet. So, yeah, I'm saying. I also I also did the same. Uh, I mean, we mentioned Luke Rally twenty three hundred dollars, Homer twice. All the Pittsburgh guys who were actually weirdly good last night, um, all literally free again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Caden Smith had a double, two RBI, a walk, sixteen Fandle points. Um, Sawinski one for three an RBI and a walk, like. Uh, McCutcheon hits third every day, apparently, for Pittsburgh, right. you know, which is, I think is weird, but... Um, Do you think Luplo starts against the lefty and Mats? Probably, but the we the Luplo thing has always been the same, where he had it done in the first couple of bats, or else he's not... Right. You know, it's like, you have two at-bats to cash in on your Jordan Luplo shares, because after that, he is just not playing um edward Oliveras, he's hitting ninth for kc but i've already expressed my love for that game um he's been pretty damn good he's only played two games but he homered in one of them has a little speed righty lefty matchup there um the franimal if you want to play fran mill he's 0 for 6 to start the year but two walks dude i'm just like jordan walker's 2400 dollars. he had another hit in an rbi last night yep Jordan Walker's a really good one, 2,400. Um, yeah, Fandle, third base and uh, third base and outfield eligible on Fandle. Jordan Walker. All right, let's uh, build the lineup. Where are we going? Pitching. Do you want to, are we <laughs> double spending? I think so. Yeah, Bieber, Franbar, or did you want to go Castillo? Um, no, I'm going Beaver fan bar. That's fine. Yeah, I think that's the move. Uh, 3785. Do you want to just go Jordan Walker there, mid, mid price? Um, yeah, that's okay. Um, 4K, we, we like the catcher. Um, yeah, I, got, I think we either play Alejandro Kirk and get as much Toronto exposure as we can, or we go down to Higashioka at 25. Um, Kirk at 34 is like crazy. I agree. Cheap. Like crazy cheap. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm, I'm good with going Kirk, getting exposure to that, uh, you know, to that team there. We didn't mention Springer at 5K as well on uh, Toronto, but just another. I mean, he's been good against lefties for yeah. Last all, year, all, last year against all of eternity, left-handed pitching. Uh, uh, Kirk was, I guess, slightly better against righties last year. Um, still hit 276 against them though, but uh, yeah, because Jan Jansen and Jansen was really good against yeah. lefties. Actually, let's go, let's go with the Yankees guys here. Let's go hit Higashioka, and if it's not him, obviously Trevino will be in the lineup. So, yep, uh, we got another twenty five hundred. All right, so we're up to forty three hundred dollars here. Um, do you want to just see if we can get Judge in this lineup? Yes. All right, that's Judge in the lineups thirty seven seventy five for we got a first, second, third, and outfielder. First, second, third, outfielder. Yeah. First, second, third. So. If we want to complete the Yankee stack, we could go Donaldson at 32 mm-hmm. um, because he can hit lefties. Gliber, so if we play Gliber, it's 3,400. We could go like Cassis at first. Yep, we could. Um, that'll give us 3,850 for a third base and outfielder. We can still go Donaldson if you want to four stack it. I guess five. Well, that'd be five. So we already have four Yankees in the lineup, so. I mean, I'm never against having five. Let's go. Uh, I know that's Bo- Do you want to go Bohm at 34? I think Bohm is a – yeah, I think Bohm is a good uh, And that gets us Duval. Let's do that. Okay. Here we go. $100 left over. Shane Bieber, Framber Valdez, uh, Higashioka, Casas, Torres, Bohm, Volpe, Walker, Judge, and Duval. So we got a two-man Boston stack, uh, which plays nicely because they hit near each other. Uh, we got a four-man Yankee stack. We got Alec Bohm coming in the way back of that one. And we got a one-off Jordan Walker uh, with two top-tier pitchers in the lineup for today. Home run call here, James. Uh, home run call is going to be... I will go... I'm going to go off the board. 
I'm going to go, even though he's not my favorite Yankee of all time, he's not even on the top 100 list. I'm going to go Josh Donaldson. Uh, I think he gets in the home run column here for the New York Yankees. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go Jordan Walker. I think he hits his first. We'll, we'll go with that. Uh, John, four today. John, did you know, by the way, that at the bottom of this podcast, if you're paying attention, uh, there is a promo code. Yep. And uh, that promo code is MLB50, and it gets you 50% off the first six months of our All-Pro package. Sure. That takes you through the first month of the NFL season, too, by the way. Uh, so for the first six months, 1998, uh, with promo code MLB50. Uh, you can cl- click the link in the bottom of the YouTube description. Uh, you can also go to fantasylam.com slash pricing. Uh, check it out there as well. It's the month-to-month package there. Uh, promo code MLB50, 50% off the first six months. You get access to all of our DFS content and access to our premium Discord channel. Uh, no better time than now to check out what we got going on over here at Fantasy Alarm. If you like the podcast, please like, subscribe, uh, do us wonders here. It really helps us out uh, with the uh, podcast, getting that boosted up there. Uh, same thing if you're listening on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, you name it, like it, subscribe, helps us out a lot. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, James and I, of course, will be back for Wednesday's slate. Uh, good luck. We will catch you guys later.